Today we're looking at uh, the parable of the great dinner, which is uh, found in the book of Luke, chapter number 14, and that comes from verses 15 through 24. Parable of the great dinner. Of course, we know a parable here is uh, not actually a story, which we can just have this concept, or it's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, or a spiritual meaning. And um, uh, Jesus Christ had presented many parables to his people, uh, for us to uh, get what he has for us and then to be able to uh, uh, receive a spiritual meaning from that. But today is regarding the great dinner, the parable of the great dinner. We pray we had an opportunity to read it and to study it and now we're coming together to, to take a look at it. It's Luke chapter number 14 verses 15 through 24. Here, this parable of the great dinner, the time of this lesson um, is uh, A.D. or the year of our Lord, 30. And the place is it's listed as probably uh, Perea. And it has four parts to this lesson. Here. It's going to be quite interesting. Guests invited. Excuses offered. Command given. And house filled. As we get through those different parts, we're going to see just how effective those parts is in, in how we feel sometimes whenever we have a great dinner. We'll see when uh, we have invited people, um, how some just did not come. And the reason they didn't come is because they had excuses. And we're going to find out that excuses are nothing more than lies, as it says, wrapped in a skin of excuse. <laughs> thought that was pre pretty interesting. Uh, and, um, and then later on, uh, I noticed in, in some of the texts, it said that, uh, let us not just simply lie about stuff. Let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. If it's something that you don't want to do, just, just say it. That way, uh, we won't be uh, having people held off so they can uh, con content continue on and tend to their, to their business. Uh, once again, here in Luke chapter number 14, verses 15 through 24, and there's a little background which I thought was really interesting here, uh, starting out. It says, from the beginning of this chapter, chapter 14 that is, we learned that the Savior had been invited to the home of a chief, chief Pharisee for dinner, since it was the Jewish Sabbath, and we know we get Sabbath this seventh, seventh day, and, but no, actually, we find out that Sabbath is rest, right? Um, and... This presumably occurred after the morning service in the synagogue. That, that they watched him. Uh, in verse 1 reveals that their purpose was to observe his actions and words with a very critical eye. To be sure, there were some Pharisees who were sympathetic to the ministry of Christ, but most were not. So they invited him to dinner. But not that they just invite him to dinner, but they invited him to dinner uh, for a special reason. And that is to to really put him on notice or to see what he's going to do in a particular setting. Yeah. Uh, and later on we see that uh, they, had in, they had basically put someone else in there. Jesus, who was often in conflict with the Pharisees over their man-made Sabbath traditions, asked, is it lawful to heal on a Sabbath day? This was no idle question, as it says here, as there was a man with dropsy uh, present, possibly planning at dinner to see what Jesus would do. And it said that dropsy was uh, this disease where uh, fluids were in his, uh, just in his body, uh, different parts of his body. And, um, and that was a serious illness. As it turned out, these experts in the law would not answer Christ's question. After healing the man, um, after healing the man, the Lord asked what they would do if one of their own animals got into a jam uh, on the Sabbath. They again refused to answer, knowing a truthful response would condemn them as hypocrites. So it was okay to help an animal, but not okay to help a, a, a human being, right? This seems to indicate that although Christ had been invited to the Pharisees' home, it was with ill intent. After this, Jesus told them that when they were invited to a feast, they should not vie for the best seats, but exercise humility. Then he went on to tell them that when they gave a dinner, instead of inviting people who could repay them, and y'all understand what I'm saying, right? Um, 
uh, who could who could repay them. You know, you invite somebody for dinner and pretty much expecting to be invited by them, you see, uh, as a payback, so to speak. Uh, they should invite those from the lower strata of society who were unable to reciprocate. After Jesus made reference to the resurrection of the just, one of the guests spoke up and declared, blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And you know, when you're sitting around with all these, these uh, high up people, religious people and it's so easy just to just to just to blurt out all these spiritual things you know and this is what happened here father in this setting uh but jesus and this is where uh this this uh lesson here picks up in uh, verse number 15 and and it continues to to lay out for us uh what jesus uh continued to say look at 15 and when one of them that sat at me of course after this man uh, had said that um, after, one, after one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things that Jesus would, had talked about as far as invitations and different things like that, uh, who to invite him and who not. Uh, he says, uh, blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Uh, and, and once again, it's just not, not, that, not that simple just to throw stuff out there. Because what this man is thinking is that everybody would be would, would, would take part in this kingdom of God. Mostly what he's looking at are the people that sit in front of him. And the people like him. What about the people that are not like him? About the people that are not around the, 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 the table. You see, and, and this is what Jesus was, uh, was, was, was alluding to when he talked about this, is that not just simply look at what's before you, but, but you've got to look beyond what's before you. Yeah. He goes on and says in verse number 16, Then said he unto him, A certain man, this is where Jesus started laying out this parable, A certain man uh, made a great supper and invited many or, or bade many uh, and sent his servants and and I kind of look at this right here. You know, I know it has four. We have four parts to this. Got the, the guests invited, the excuses offered, the command given in the house filled. I, I kind of I kind of associate these things with these different feelings that someone would have when you when you would have a great dinner and you are so excited about this dinner. You know how it is when you would have your, your big old what, homecoming dinner and uh, uh, Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas dinner and, and your birthday dinners and, and everything else. And you're so excited. You're, you're hyped. You prepare for it. Mm -hmm. You set money aside. Yeah. You, you, you know, you do all that. You, 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 you get your, your, your place set up. Your menus and all this going on. And so this, this man had, had invited so many in verse number 17 he said, and, and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that, that they were bidden. Come, for all things are now ready. You've been planning for this a long time. Got all the things together. Major invitations. Now all of a sudden the dinner is ready. Now you send back the invitation and says, you can come now, the, the great feast is ready. Uh -huh. And the only thing you're expecting is for the doors to open and, and seats to be filled. Servants are ready to serve. But is this emoji of this smile that we have right here regarding this supper, this great supper, all of a sudden, that smile becomes a frown. Look at verse number 18. And they all with one consent or accord began, look at this, to make excuse. Began to make excuse. And this is right here, excuse is offered. So we had the guests invited, and, and those guests began to make excuses. All of them together seems like, like it was planned almost, but, but more likely not, but they all had excuses. The first said this right here. I bought a piece of ground. And you know what? I got to go see it. I pray to have me excused. Uh -huh. Now as the commentary lays it out here, it says, who? 
will go on by ground without seeing it first. <laughs> Sight unseen. Who would do that? As someone would, uh, would say, that salesperson is so good, he would sell you a, what did they say? A bridge. A, a bridge. <laughs> A bought land sight unseen. Nothing but an excuse which is basically covered or, or, or an excuse that is uh, enveloped uh, uh, over or wrapped uh, over a lie. I bought land. I need to go see it. Spend all your money for buying some land and then you're going to go see it at this time for dinner? So here he goes on and not that but he says this right here in verse number 19. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. And now that I bought them, I got to go and test them. I got to go prove them. Pray be half me, excuse. So he says, look, bought this yoke of oxen, farming people, agriculture, doing things, buying some, this, this, this oxen that's going to work for you. But he had spent his money but didn't see if the oxen would work. Maybe they were lazy. Maybe they were, they had a broken leg. Maybe they just couldn't, whatever it could be, but he bought them without testing first. Yeah. And in this commentary laid out, it says, in modern day farming, who would go buy a tractor? Who would go buy uh, something that will assist them in a farming activity and not first make sure it works. Makes sense. So yet another lie. I know that's a pretty strong word, but guess what? It is what it is. Amen. Look at verse 20. And another said, these are the excuses, and another said, I married a wife. And I say good for him. Kudos. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe we should take that up these days. <laughs> and therefore, I cannot come. Now, he didn't ask for no excuse. What he said, I mean, he, he basically, he didn't ask to be excused, rather. <laughs> he just said what? I ain't coming, you know. <laughs> and... And one of the things in which this particular one is said in the commentary here, you know, when it talked about how, you know, a person gets married. And during this time when these, uh, these banquets were there, they were just for the men. You know how it is, ladies. And, um, all right then. Uh, so, you know, what, what happens is that, that's what the commentary said, y'all, okay? Back then. <laughs> now, I don't know who prepared the food, but back then. Um, but, uh, it was for the men. And it's, since the invite was before the marriage, it seemed like it would say that it would have gone on anyways. Yeah. And, and, uh, and regarding the purchase of the land or the purchase of the oxen or even getting married, couldn't they have just gone to eat dinner and then gone to test the, check out the land and test their oxen and, and going back to your wife? Yeah. They just got married. I'm gonna understand if you've been, you know, been married for a while. You ain't going nowhere. Hmm? Why? Why said you ain't going? Oh boy, you're really getting something now. <laughs> but, but no, just uh, all matters aside. Actually, started talking about stuff like that in commentary. You know, whether you believe it or not. And. Um, so these are excuses. And now, those excuses were laid out and Jesus laid them out for us, y'all. So it lets us know that we too have some excuses, don't we? Amen. Our excuses are wrapped in a lie. Or a lie is wrapped in the excuse. Mm -hmm. I know it's a strong word again, but guess what? It is what it is. Uh -huh. I mean, y'all want to get up about 9 o'clock this morning. Come on now. Yeah. You see, so the thing is, is that, but we didn't have no excuse. Guess what? Because we made it. Now, if I didn't make it, I could have come up with an excuse. Like, I don't know why we had fifth Sunday anyway at 9 o'clock. I don't know why it's so early. I don't know why. You, you, you know how we come up with excuses, right? You know, you, know you, you, you talk to yourself, you tell yourself, and they're like that. And then, and then all of a sudden, we see, what excuse can I come up with? So basically, what we're trying to do is formalize a lie. 
You start with a, with a thought, idea, stuff like that, and then it just simply builds, and, and we're the one who, who gives life to that thing. And so we've got to be careful about those things. And, and what I've learned is that if you have set your mind to do something, just do it. That's the best thing to do. Just do it. Amen. And, uh, and God will be pleased, and especially this for the glory of God, and for our edification, and, and, uh, and, to, and to help others, and to grow in the Lord. But he goes on in, in, um, in this right here, in verse number 21, the command given. So, so we had the guests invited. We, we had the, the guests start coming up with some excuses and said reasons why they cannot come. But, but now it picks up a command is given. You see, after you're doing all that smiling and stuff like that, don't you know that smiles don't last always? You know, because we, you know, because we are people, we're, we're human, we, we have feelings and, and we have issues in our life. We have all this stuff and, and we can only smile for so long. Yeah. You have this, this meal, this, you prepared it. You laid it out. We kind of talked about this. I can't remember when. Whether it was Sunday school or Bible study. Do all that. You, you add your salt. You add your pepper. And you, and you make it look pretty and stuff. You know, you have all of your food groups there. You get your dessert. Peach cobbling. Potato Something else. Pie. Who's that? Potato pies. Sweet potato pie. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know, he's talking about potato pie is like a pot pot in, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, and ice cream and what, what else? Uh, who's that? Banana pudding and uh, two cake. cake and but butter. What's that? Pecan pie and that's enough. Okay. <laughs> That's enough for to go, to go home and make it or go to the restaurant and order it. Uh, so, you know, all that, 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 all that is done. You, 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 look, you did all that. You, you made it. You baked it. You, you took time out. You did all of that. You prepared it. You know how many guests that you invited. All 20, 25 guests. None of them uh, 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 said they weren't coming. <coughs> then you make the phone call. You send out your, your remaining thing and say the, the meal is ready. You can come on now to the banquet feast. Mm -hmm. And out of the 25 that you have invited, 20 of them come up with excuses or lies. And your smile has now become a frown. You can imagine how Jesus felt even today in 2018. How the, how the invitation has been there for the longest time. How the feast has been made for everybody. Yes. And so few have accepted the invitation. But yes, we had the guests invited, and then we get to, they start having the excuses that, that are offered. You know how you invite somebody to church, and, and, then you, and then all of a sudden, you know, they may not come up with an excuse then, but they'll come up with an excuse later on. Excuses offered. And we're so nice, and we're so kind, we still got that, that's this time ain't no real smile, it's a fake smile, and we say what? I understand. That's okay. Hmm? Because really is that you went to go pick them up and they didn't tell you they weren't, they weren't going until you made it there. They expended your gas and your time and you late got getting to church and as you're leaving there and as you turn around you begin to pray. Lord help me. So you can imagine how this, the, the emotions are running in individuals. They're up and they're down. All because of somebody else. But your heart is out there to be trampled on. 
excuses offered. But here in 21 and 22, he gives the command given. The one that's in charge of the feast tells the servant. He says this right here. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly. Why quickly? Why quickly? There you go, sister. Absolutely right. You know it. Ain't no microwave during this time. Ain't no food warmers during this time. The fire is there. You get it while you can. Quickly into the streets and lanes of the city because by the time, amen, if they end up waiting, if you wait too long, the stuff will be cold and somebody being invited to something like this and it's, what is this? The stuff that's hot end up being cold. The stuff supposed to be cold end up being hot. I'm not coming back to no dinner like this. You invite somebody to church with you. The way church is supposed to be. But uh, your, your, your body guest gets here and the church ain't the way it's supposed to be. How is the church supposed to be? It's supposed to be worship and praise. Giving honor to God. But instead the church is talking about one another. Backbiting and fighting and all this. Uh, you know, infighting and all this other kind of stuff. So that, that's a, those are the things in which, in which you have to deal with when it, when it comes to. The, if you're going to invite somebody. You want to make sure that, that you're inviting them to the right place. You want to make sure that you're in the right place. It talks about association and, and being in, in places. But even wherever you are, you should be able to be a witness wherever you are. No, I know we not, don't go in everywhere. But wherever God allows you to be, at least you can be a light in a dark place. Year 21. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, uh, said to his servant, said to his servant, go out quickly in, uh, into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither and bring in hither the, the poor. Here we go. So first of all, go out quickly into the streets and into the lanes of the city. Go on, going out there and bring in uh, here the bring in here the poor and the and, and the and the and the maimed or the or the crippled and uh, and the lame or the halt and the blind. Just bring them all in. Bring them in. Bring them in. Why? Because the folk that were invited didn't show up. Mm -hmm. Bring them in. Going out there. I know they're out there. They're the ones that's holding up the street sign. I mean, holding up the sign saying, I'm hungry. Uh, I need work. Uh, uh, those are the ones that's out there saying, uh, 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 saying something or, or doing something. They're, those are the ones that's out there that wanting to be invited somewhere. Yes. Those are the ones out there that need to be clothed. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. And then look at the rest of this right here says, and yet there is room. Mm -hmm. So he, even though he goes out to this area of the streets and uh, uh, there in the lanes of the city and, and, and get whomever he can and, and, and bring them in, invite them in and everything. And then those that are out there, they do come. So many come. But, but yet this great feast, there's still room. When you have a feast, you want all the food to be eaten. You want all the what's there to be to be consumed. Because you don't want it to go to waste. Waste is tasty. So look at verse number 23 on 24. And the Lord said unto the servant, since you went to the city. Since you went out there and got who you can in the lanes, in the streets, go into the highways and into the hedges. Going out there to the country. Going out a little bit further. And then he says, and compel them to come in. 
So it says compel them to come in. And one sense is saying that you find someone out there that you know needs some help. Grab them by the arm and bring them on in. Another sense is that the whole prospect of getting someone in is to offer them something that will entice them in. Entice, I know it's not too good of a word, but to let them know uh, what's good for them. And it's there. When it comes to Jesus, we got to tell them, those that, that need to be compelled, we got to tell them why they need Jesus. We got to share it with them. But here, he's going to let them know that, look, we got a, 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 a feast laid out. This is a banquet. Look, we didn't spare nothing. Everything is out there. From lo uh, there ain't no lobsters or nothing, but uh, there ain't no pork either. Well, they got some food that is laid out. You need to come on in. Have y'all ever had this before? Well, this is tasty. Come on in. Purpose is that, that his house will be filled. Don't you always want your house filled? Take time out to do all that you do. And uh, here's what we always say because the Bible said it. Where two or three gathered in his name, what? That's what happens. Two or three gathered in his name. But don't you know that there are so many people out there dying and going to hell for what the Bible says? Yeah. And if we have this compassion in our part, we don't want to see that happen. So we've got to, because you know how we invite folk to church? We invite the folk to say it already. Here's what Jesus says. You dealt with your family. You dealt with your community. So you're going out a little further. Remember when they try to fish? Sometimes you just got to go out what? A little further. Not getting anything, not working. So change it a little bit and go out and look for it. If the folk that, the big wig folk ain't, ain't coming in, don't want to, they go and get the little wig folk. In my invitation, that's what it's about. You have now. Yes, now. And that's what the Bible says. So it applies to us. But you've got to let them know that they can come where God can feed them, where they can receive what God has for them. God wants his house filled. Not just churches, but he's talking about his kingdom. Now, churches being filled, that would be great. But first and foremost, we've got to get the invitation out. He says in 24, For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Mm -hmm. Those who refuse the invitation, the door was shut on. It's too late. No more. So what do we have to do? In this parable of the great dinner, they got to come while the food is there. They got to come while the invitation is open. They can't wait forever. Because the door is going to be closed. God is saying the same thing to us. We can't wait forever. Amen. God is very patient. We know he's patient because he's waiting on us. Regardless how long it was. We've got to be patient with others, but at the same time, we've got to uh, ensure that they receive an invitation. Invitation to Christ, that is. Not just to the church, but to Christ. To Christ first. Then to the church, whether they're saved or unsaved. Our goal is to get the unsaved. Not to the church, but to the kingdom. That's what we have to do. So church, yeah, we have a uh, A mandate. A mandate to invite folk to the great banquet, to this dinner. Years ago, I heard this song. It's a song, and at the same time, it's also saying, uh, Come on over for the table.
table is spread, you know, said the feast of the Lord is going on. And, uh, and that's the invitation. Come on in. Come on over. Come on over and receive. Now the food that's there may or may not be good for you. For you. Maybe you are a cook and you can add. You can help. You can assist. Come on, spiritually, that is your Then maybe that maybe they need you over there. However it is, God can use you. Whatever your gift is, God can use you. You can put it in a plan. You can put it in there. And, and you can be used at that banquet. Because God is the one that's getting glorified. We're going to be blessed. But as long as we glorify God. Bless his holy name. We're going to be blessed in it also. So in this particular lesson right here, we learned that we got a first invite. We also got to learn that we're going to have some disappointments along the way. Everybody is not going to accept the invitation. It's not going to everybody's not going to do it. So we might as well get used to it and not take it personally. I know we can take it personally sometimes, but don't take it personally. And then now, we've got to get over that thing. We've got to get over Because it's, it's going it's to happen. And then you simply go out to the next group of people. Start inviting them. You want to come on in? Just invite them. Then if that don't happen, still room, going out a little bit further. So that's what they do. Yeah. So if I had a subtopic this lesson right here, it would be go out a little further. Go out a little further. Dealt with this right here. I'm still dealing with the church in itself, up in Canaan. But we got to go out a little bit further. So, Saint, you got to go out a little further. You can only do so much, but we got to continue to. to what's that, sir? Go out a little further. Go out a little further. Absolutely right. Gotta continue, you can't stop. The meals gotta continue to be prepared. It's gotta happen. I'll be here to do that until the Lord says otherwise. But in the meantime, the rest of us gotta go out a little further. Yeah. Invite. Make it uh, make it some people to accept it and get and get some that don't accept it. Let's go out a little further. But we've got to keep on going out a little further. Because yes, that's the way it works in the kingdom of God. All right, saints, that's the lesson for today. Now the doors of the church is open.